Hello boys and girls and welcome to Arsenal TV. Um, now before I get into my preview for the Arsenal and Burnley game, I would just like to say a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all my subscribers that's on this channel. Um, and I hope you all get what you want for Christmas and everything else. Um, and I hope that you all have a Happy New Year as well. I hope 2019 brings you such good luck. Um, now, guys, we're going to get into the preview for the Arsenal versus Burnley game, which is tomorrow early kickoff at 12 o'clock. Do you know what? I'm not really... Now, after the performances that Arsenal have had during against Frampton from Tottenham Hotspur, I'm not actually looking forward to it at all. My reason for that is because when we played against Southampton, it was three goals and they was all from headers. Now, Koscielny and whoever else was at the back should have dealt with that better because that is bread and butter stuff for, for them to head the ball away. That's bread and butter defending. So they should have done a lot better to what they did during that, during that game. Tottenham, in terms of, I don't know why Emery is putting Xhaka at the back as a centre-back because it just doesn't work. You know, it just doesn't work at all. You can see every game that we've played with Xhaka in the back, we've either lost or we've drew a game. But to be honest, we should put Xhaka in that midfield because he's built such a good partnership with Lucas Torreira. He should be in that midfield. So, yeah, in terms of this game, I'm not overly confident, but I feel that we can get the three points and creep up the table slowly. But... You know, it is what it is. We have to go with what we've got. It's going to be a very, very tough for us now because we've got Burnley tomorrow. We've got Brighton Boxing Day and then we've got Liverpool. And then that's going to be the tough one. So, yeah, it is what it is. We have to go with what we've got at the moment. Um, I'm hoping that Emery can go into January and get some really, really good signings. Like we need another centre-back, another commanding centre-back. We need a left-back. We need a right-back. We need a winger. That's what I feel that Emery needs to go and get within January. But whether or not that we're going to do that, I've got no idea. And I don't even know how much money exactly Emery's got to spend. I'm hearing that Emery's got a hundred a hundred million pounds to spend in January. But we don't know. We've seen it in the past with Arsenal saying that we've we've never spent like big money like paying out like eighty million pounds for a player or over a hundred million pounds for a player. We haven't done that. <laughs> we've never done that. So we'll have to see what we've got. Um guys, I'm now gonna get into my predicted eleven. Um this is the lineup that I would go with, not what Emery would go with. I feel there's there's probably uh, there's two changes, two or three changes in this team. Um, I'm actually going to go with a three, three centre backs, um, two you know two uh, wingers, um, you know two right and left wingers. Um, I'm also going to go with two defensive midfielders, one number ten role, two strikers up front. That is what I'm going with. So, guys, we're going to get into the one to eleven. Um, in goal for me is going to be Burnt Leno. Uh, pretty simple choice you know everybody knows now that Lino is a Premier League goalkeeper I feel that he should have done a little bit better and I feel that the game against Southampton was Lino's worst performance in goal for Arsenal um, but I'm hoping that he could he can rectify that and put in a good performance in against Burnley tomorrow so Burnt Lino goes in goal we're going to move into the centre-backs. Um, first off, it's going to be Socrates. Um, I don't have, really have that much of a problem with Socrates. I feel that he needs someone that's the complete opposite to him in defence. I'm not saying the likes of Mustafi or, you know, Koscielny or Jenkinson or whatnot, but I feel that he needs someone that's more experienced at the back. Someone like Sergio Ramos or someone like Chilwell as a left back. You know, somewhere along those lines. That's what I feel that Socrates needs. But in terms of his performance, he hasn't done too badly. Um, when he played against Tottenham, I feel that he should have played a lot better. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. So Socrates goes into that position. Uh, playing in the middle of the three centre-backs is going to be Mustafi. Now, 
I don't know if he's got over his knock from the previous game that he played. Um, I'm hoping he's okay. This is where I feel that Socrates has been missing him for the past couple of games. Uh, but you know my thoughts on Mustafi. You know, one minute he has a good game, next minute he doesn't and whatnot. But he needs to put in a decent performance. And so, for me, Mustafi goes into that position. And last but not least, that goes into that centre-back position is going to be Cole Jenkinson. The reason why I've gone with Jenkinson is a simple reason because I feel that Lauren Koscielny is not up to speed. I feel that he's missing spring in him. Um, I feel that he could be finished by the end of this season. Um, I don't know what Emery, uh, what Emery is thinking, but that's what I feel. I feel that he's a, a way off the pace. Yeah, I know people will say that he's just come back from his injury. He needs to get back back into it. That's no excuse. I feel that even years before that, even way before he got injured, he was a little bit off the pace. So I feel that we should probably offload him in January or, you know, in the summer and get in another defender. That's what I feel that Emery should do. Whether or not people will agree, I don't know. But for me, this is the the ultimate reason why I've gone with Cole Jenkinson at the centre-back position. So Cole Jenkinson goes at centre-back. Now we're going to move into the uh, wing backs. Uh, first off, on the right wing back, I'm going to go with Hector Bellerin. Uh, he really had, the, he didn't have really that much of a great game against Southampton. Uh, didn't play that great. He didn't do. Yeah, he was okay a little bit going forward, but it was his tracking back that was annoying. He wasn't tracking back as okay. We he, he hasn't been tracking back for a, quite a few times. But for me, I feel that. Bellerin, he needs to track back more. He needs to be on it. He needs to be on it. We know that Bellerin has been improving ever since Unai Emery has took charge. But I just feel that Bellerin needs to do more defensively that coming back and not... His pace going forward and his attacking going forward is, is fine for me. But I just feel that he needs to work more defensively. That's all. Uh, so, yeah, Bellerin goes on the right wing back position. Plan on that left wing back position is going to be C. Kleszenek. Um Do you know what? Kleszenek has played well when he has been as a left back. Uh, sorry, as a left wing back. I feel that if we're going to play as a free, then I feel that... Kolesnik should play um, in that position because we're playing to his strength. Um, so yeah, for me, Kolesnik will go into that position. If you put if you put Kolesnik in a back four, then he can't play as a left back. I feel that then that's where you put Monreal in. Um, but for me, Kolesnik goes in that left wing back position. We're going to move into the two defensive midfielders. First off is Lucas Torreira. Um, I've got no problem with Lucas Torreira. He is an absolute fighter when he's on that field. His interceptions is phenomenal. His interceptions are phenomenal. But against Southampton and against Tottenham, he was missing Granite Xhaka next to him. That's what I feel that he was missing. That's why he couldn't do the job perfectly, as we know that Torreira can do. Um, apart from that, I feel that Lucas Torreira is probably... One of the best center defense, uh, you know, the center, um, defensive midfielders in the Premier League. I feel he is one of the best alongside um, alongside Kante from Chelsea. So yeah, Lucas Torreira will go into that position. Playing alongside him, it will be Granit Xhaka. Now, as I said at the start of the video, playing Granit Xhaka as a centre back does not work. It doesn't work. Full stop. You can see the partnership that Lucas Torreira and Granit Xhaka have built in that defensive midfield. Playing those two as defensive midfielders, that is the balance. That's the balance. Now, when you have Torreira and Granit Xhaka in that position, Torreira will let Xhaka go forward. He will let him have that bit of freedom and to go and create chances. It's the same with it's the same with um, Granit Xhaka. He will let Torreira go forward and do the business, but. Playing as a centre back, you know, he, Granit Xhaka is not a centre back, so you can't expect him to pull out um, a ten out of ten performance because he's not a centre back. So it just doesn't work. This is why we've been losing games. I know Emery's trying to make up the numbers, but when you've got the likes of uh, Medley on the bench, 
or in the reserves, why don't you give him a chance? At least Medley knows what he's doing as a defender because that is that is his position. He knows what to do. So instead of putting taking out Grant Xhaka and putting Xhaka in defence, give Medley a chance. It's as simple as that. But you know it is what it is. Yes, Grant Xhaka against Southampton and against Tottenham, he didn't have a great game. Because he's in the wrong position. Yes, he had some, he was playing some good balls. But then he was playing absolute atrocious ones. Absolute shockers. So, for me, Granit Xhaka goes into that defensive midfield. Um, now, we're going to move into that number 10 role. Um, that can go in and out. Um, so, for me, first off, I'm, I'm in that number 10 role. I'm going to go with Mr. Ozil. People will blame him for to- uh, for sorry for Southampton when he came on, but he but he was really trying hard to get the ball and to try and you know and create something. But the only thing is with Özil is that he keeps pulling sickies. He's getting three hundred and fifty grand a week, and then he's going saying I've got a backache. What are you seriously going to sit there and play Fortnite? For God knows how long. For days on end. Why? You're a prof- you are a professional football player. You're getting paid a heap of lot of money. To go out there and do your job. Week in week out. Why are you not doing it? It's as simple as that. Ozil. Yes Ozil has been criticised. But. When he's on his game. Like he was against Leicester. You can see what he can do. People are saying get rid of him in January, but then you got to think we're also getting rid of Ramsey in the in the summer. So that's two number ten positions that's gone. Then you've got the likes of Mkhitaryan. Yes, Mkhitaryan was probably the best player on the pitch against um, against Southampton when he scored the two goals. He was probably the best player on the field, but with Mkhitaryan. He's still a little bit off the pace. When was the last time that he had a 10 out of 10 performance week in, week out? He hasn't. Well, hardly any of the players have. So, yeah. So, for me, Ozil will go into that position because I know what he can do. So, for me, Ozil goes into that number 10 role. Playing as the two strikers up front. First off, it's going to be Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. I ain't got a problem with Aubameyang whatsoever. I just feel Aubameyang needs to score more goals. That's pretty much how I see it. He needs to be alongside Lacazette. That's the way I see it. He needs to be alongside Lacazette. Not coming on as an impact player. No. No, 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 no. If you're going to play him... That you play him as a two up front. Yes, I'm say. Uh, yes, I have been saying that he needs to be closer to Lacazette. Then I, this is where I feel Emery needs to play them as a two. Then you can see what they can do. It's as simple as that. So Abamian will go into that position, and also playing alongside him is going to be Alexandra Lacazette. I ain't got a problem with Lacazette either. But Lacazette's hold up play is absolutely brilliant. My only problem with Lacazette is that he needs to when he has that chance in that open space he needs to release that ball he needs to pull that trigger even though if it's going to be out of the 16 yard box he needs to pull that trigger because we know what he can do when Lacazette was at Leon. he was pulling goals out of the box you know left right and center week in week out yes people will say this is the Premier League it's tougher yeah I get that but like I said, we know what he can do. He just needs to pull that trigger when he's got that space. So, for me, Lacazette will go up front as a leading, as a striker alongside Bamiang. Um, so, guys, there is my 1-11. to Let me know in the comments below if you agree with my 1-11 to or not. Uh, let me know your predicted score as well. I'm going to go with an Arsenal win because um, I feel that we can get the three points for this game. Um, so, I'm going to go, uh, I'll go Arsenal 3-0. I go Arsenal three 0 um, So guys, you've been watching Arsenal TV. Um, thank you for the 160 subscribers that have subscribed to your YouTube channel. Absolutely appreciate it. Let's get the channel even higher, um, guys. Tonight at seven o'clock UK time, I am going on to Cannon Fodder TV uh, at seven o'clock alongside a few other people. Um, we're going to be talking about a few things, um, so keep a lookout. Go over to there um, and make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel as well. Um, so, guys, you've been watching Arsenal TV, and I am out of here.